With burning shores less than a week away, the launch trailer has finally dropped. If you haven't seen it yet, the link is in the description. But with that said, let's dive in and see what we have in store. First, we see a similar sight of Aloy soaring above the clouds as we hear her say, the enemy is headed south to the burning shores. Then from a skyscraper, we see a large concentration of energy amassing at its peak. It unleashes a barrage of projectiles, forcing Aloy to take evasive action, and unfortunately, fall from her aerial mount. She is able to deploy her shield wing in time so the fall isn't fatal, but after smashing into some ruins, she blacks out. These blasts don't appear to be coming from any kind of machine and seem very technologically advanced, most likely connected to the principal antagonist of the DLC and with capabilities far beyond most of the tribal world. When she comes to, she's made landfall on the coast and comes face to face with whom we can only assume is Sika, the Gwen Marine that was revealed in the last PlayStation blog for the DLC. She says, my people are lost and scattered. What could he possibly want with them? Followed by an image of their makeshift settlement, Fleet's End. Aloy responds, we have to find out, no matter what it takes. From here we see several scenes shown of the two repelling, climbing, and making their way to the ruins of an ancient Horus. We see beneath and woven through the Hollywood sign is a massive line of cable, presumably to awaken the machine. To me, this indicates a thought-out and purposeful attempt to raise the Titan rather than a delving incident gone terribly wrong. Next, we see a hologram of Alva, confirming her presence will be felt in this latest adventure, even if not in person. Next, we see a Quen individual adorned in ornate armor and highly decorated with medals and awards. This is most likely the leader of these Quen, Admiral Garrett, an important character who it seems will play a major role within the DLC. Next is a familiar face whom many will be happy to see. The foreshadowing left in the base game has come to fruition, as Gildan has traveled all the way from the frozen wilds to the burning shores, the only character we know of outside of Aloy to appear in each of the two game's DLCs. We see a water wing dive beneath the waves as Aloy says, he's up to something big. Every tribe, every one, is in danger indicating we are dealing with a single principal enemy, most likely a human by the description. Next we see what may be the most fascinating scene in the whole trailer, a statue of a woman with a rifle over her shoulder, surrounded by figures and holograms of dinosaurs. If not for the presence of this person, I would be inclined to believe that this could just be an ancient exhibit from another museum, akin to Montana recreations in the frozen wilds. But it may be hinting here that with the leaps taken in the last era of human civilization, we may have brought dinosaurs back in some way. In the HZD data point Artemis status, we hear Alpha Charles Ronson discuss frozen zoos, full of genetic samples of extinct species from days gone, more than 14,000 having gone extinct between the years 2000 and 2043. Though these are the only dates mentioned, these facilities may have contained more. He describes species trapped in ghoulish hologram dioramas, perhaps similar to what we're seeing here. Even if this is something more akin to a high-level VR experience, as was popular with the old ones, these kinds of facilities could have served to inspire Hephaestus without Gaia in its creation of more deadly hunter-killers. After this, we see Aloy and Seeker ride together on the back of a Sunwing, before we catch our first glimpse into what I feel is the key to defeating our newest enemy. We see a figure adorned in Quen armor wielding Far Zenith nanotech. After examining this scene and the following, I believe this to be Aloy in both. Whether she has to venture back to the base or find some remnant of Zenith activity further south, we see she is able to harness this power by the time she has to face down an awoken metal devil a tool in her arsenal far beyond the chariot line of the 21st century that could be the key to bringing the Horus down. Both utilize nanotech to devastating effect, which may help neutralize the Titan's biomass conversion capabilities that devastated the forces of Operation Enduring Victory. Beyond this, she still has to deal with the machine whose size and strength is unmatched on Earth, not to mention its most important ability, the production of other pharaoh machines. 
a fight the likes of Aloy or anyone in the 31st century has never seen before. Though the trailer was just over a minute long, what we've seen looks incredible. New landscapes, weapons, mechanics, allies, and enemies all so close now. If you're a fan of the lore and world building of this amazing franchise, be sure to subscribe because we'll have so much more to discover very, very soon in the Burning Shores. And that brings our journey to an end. If you'd like to see more content like this, likes and shares are always appreciated. And if you're hungry for more Horizon lore, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of our lore library. Also consider joining our Discord and our channel memberships to get exclusive content on the lore of Horizon. And as always, thanks for watching and keep questing.